So the same thing kind of always happens when a new phone is announced. The media gets the device ahead of time, maybe a couple days, a couple weeks if we're lucky, and we get to use it while we're preparing our review. Then the date and time of the press embargo arrives, the embargo lifts, everybody posts their review at once, and it is a giant, big frenzy of activity. There's commenters going nuts and defenders and attackers, and it's just a huge explosion for about a day. And then everything disappears. I mean, sure, there's follow-up coverage and stuff as people find bugs. People have other stuff to say about the devices. They, they wear them in over the course of a, of a day or so. But really, nobody ever goes back and revisits these devices after that initial blast of, of review to see how they feel after a couple weeks. So let's do something about it. Let's take another look at the newest version of the most popular tablet in the world, the iPad 4. I'm Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is episode 10 of After the Buzz. We found that the iPad 3 wasn't exactly fast. The combination of the A5X CPU and the high display resolution meant that the 3 felt underpowered in places like high FPS gaming and even web browsing, where lag and stutters were not rare. And so we were excited to hear that the iPad 4 would pack the A6X CPU, which is derived from the very impressive A6 found in the iPhone 5. In fact, Apple claims that the iPad 4 has twice the performance of the iPad 3, which is quite a lofty assertion. Not only were we expecting better performance on the iPad 4, but perhaps less heat and better battery life thanks to the smaller size of the CPU. And the new lightning connector, while not a headline feature itself, is now tied to a higher voltage plug. The iPad 3 took a terrible seven hours to fully charge, and we were wondering if the iPad 4 would be any better. Let's start off by addressing the performance issue. The A6X chip is a dual-core CPU with a quad-core GPU. So we were eager to try Asphalt 7 on the iPad 4, which looks incredible on the iPhone 5, but was laggy on the iPad 3. The developer has updated Asphalt 7 to work with the A6X chip on the iPad 4. So what did we find? Well, the performance is definitely improved over the iPad 3, but not by much. In fact, as you can see here in gameplay, the frame rates don't seem up to par with what we get on the iPhone 5. It's a little bit laggy. In terms of web browsing, the iPad 4 comes out ahead when compared to the iPad 3, but not by much. In fact, this faster but not by much story rings true in every comparison we did. Launching apps, moving around a web page, and playing games all were indeed more speedy on the iPad 4, but definitely not twice as fast as Apple would lead you to believe. But beyond the slightly improved performance, the iPad 4 has improved Wi-Fi, according to Apple. How much improved? In our tests, it's just slightly improved with range that is perhaps 15% better than the 3. Again, Apple is claiming a 100% improvement in Wi-Fi speed, and we just don't see that. What about heat dissipation? The iPad 3 would get quite warm after a long gaming session, and it seems that the iPad 4 has actually improved in this area. The front-facing camera on the iPad 4 is now higher resolution, and it does a much better job in low-light situations. If you're one of the few that actually use FaceTime, you'll appreciate this improvement in quality. How about battery life and charge times? Well, we have good news to report. Thanks to the 20% increase in voltage in the charger, the iPad 4 charges in, well, 20% less time. So instead of 7 hours to go from 0 to 100%, it'll take a bit over 5 hours. The reason it takes so long to charge the iPad is because it has a tremendous 11,666 milliamp hour battery. That's like 7 average smartphone batteries in one, so it's no wonder that the iPad takes a while to charge. And speaking of charge times, has battery life improved with the iPad 4? No, it hasn't gotten any better, and that's not so bad considering that the iPad 3 had really great battery life. Expect 9 to 10 hours of battery life with Wi-Fi, and slightly less with LTE at medium screen brightness. For most users that use their iPad for about an hour a day, this means that you'll have to plug in once per week or so. What hasn't changed is the bulk of the iPad. The iPad 4 is just as cumbersome as the iPad 3, making long reading sessions uncomfortable unless you're resting the iPad on something. Of course, you could opt for the iPad mini, which is tremendously light and thin, but if you're considering the iPad 4, you probably want the larger high-res display. Also unchanged is the amazing selection of apps you get for the iPad, the vast majority of which have been updated to work on the Retina display. There's literally an iPad app for everything, and most are impressively high quality. 
If you're going to buy an iPad 4, you have a lot of choices in terms of color, capacity, and LTE or Wi-Fi. Our recommendation, if you have the extra cash, is to go with at least 32 gigabytes in capacity because if you plan on downloading HD movies or a lot of games and apps, you'll quickly run out of space with just 16 gigabytes. Then, on the issue of LTE versus Wi-Fi, we recommend that you opt for the LTE version because even if you never use it, it'll improve your resale value. Plus, you can turn the LTE on and off as you need it so you're not stuck paying for unused data. In terms of choice of carrier, we tend to like AT&T a bit more because their LTE network is rapidly growing and more importantly, their fallback HSBA Plus network speeds are much faster than what you get on Verizon and Sprint over EVDO. And finally, when choosing between black and white, consider that the white will hide fingerprints much better than the black. So now that the buzz from the iPad 4 has worn off, we can say this about it. If you own an iPad 3, there is very little reason to upgrade. In fact, we see the iPad 4 as an awkward in-between product that is going to be outshined by a significantly thinner and lighter iPad in 2013. We say this because the 10-inch iPad's design is now three generations old, and Apple is likely on the verge of revamping the design to be similar to the incredible thin and light iPad mini. So if you can be patient, skip the iPad 4 and see what next year brings. This concludes episode 10 of After the Buzz. If you like our videos, guys, please subscribe to our channel so that you find out first when new videos are uploaded. And of course, if you like this video, please shoot us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and that's it for now. Resolution display meant that the three, that's not right. With the high resolution display, melt the, th meant, melt, meant, melt, melt, meant, what? One more time. We found that the iPad 3 wasn't exactly fast. The combo, the combination, the combination, the combination. What is combination?